Hello, friends. How's it going? Welcome to the Monster Mash Weekend Ween Readathon! As I'm filming this, it's actually Thursday, so we are about 12 hours away from the official start of this readathon, but I wanted to get started and just kind of film a little intro for this vlog because I wanted to let you know what I'm planning on reading over these next, you know, four days. If you have no idea what the heck Monster Mash even is, um, it's a readathon that is hosted by myself and my friend Olivia from Olivia Reads a Latte. I'll have her channel linked down below, and I'll also have our announcement video video and everything that you need to know about it linked down below. But basically this is like a readathon that we like to do every year around like Halloween time. This is our second time hosting a weekend ween readathon. And yeah, I'm planning on doing two vlogs for this. So this is going to be part one and then a part two will be coming a little bit later. But I thought I would let you know just kind of like what I'm planning on reading this week because I do have quite a stacked TBR, but I also did want to let you know that I'm actually going to be moving on at November 1st. So it's going to be quite a chaotic weekend for me, you know, as we're getting prepared to move. So hopefully I'll be able to get to everything that I'm trying to read for this. So on my TBR, I do have a quite a few different kinds of things. Like for example, I have two different novellas that I'm trying to get to this week. Um, one of them is They Were Here Before Us by Eric LaRocca, and then also And Then I Woke Up. And both of these, um, I love reading horror novellas just in general, but I feel like both of these would be perfect to read during this readathon because they are pretty short. They would be easy to get through, I think. And um, I think And Then I Woke Up would complete the challenge for reading a book that involves like a monster of some kind because I think there are zombies in this book. Like maybe correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know. I haven't read it. And like who knows what kind of monsters might be lurking in this book. Like I have no idea. So very excited to be reading both of these. I also do have some manga that I'm planning to read as well because one of our prompts is to either listen to a spooky audiobook or read a manga novel. So I do have uh, Blood on the Tracks Volume 1 and this is a manga series that I've been really interested in because a lot of people compare it to Bates Motel because it has like a creepy mother and son relationship I guess in this series and so I'm really excited to finally jump into volume one. I've been having this, I've had this manga on my TBR for quite some time now so really looking forward to it. And then I also got Gaio, Jayo, I'm not totally sure how you pronounce this, I'll have to look it up, but it's uh, one of the books by Junji Ito. This is one of his manga novels. I found it at my library and I was like, oh my god, perfect. Like, cause I would love to read more Junji Ito and this is one of his backlists that I still have not yet read. So I'm really looking forward to checking this out during this readathon. I also do have a few graphic novels that I picked up at my library that just sounded really interesting. The first one is The Nice House on the Lake, which this one just looks super creepy. And then I also found this one called Injection. This one might actually be a little bit more like horror sci-fi because it says once upon a time there were five crazy people and they poisoned the 21st century like that's all it says on the back so like what the heck I don't know I don't know it sounds really interesting and it has some really like beautiful art throughout it that just looks really dark and really creepy and the colors oof also my friend uh Brittany has read this one and she's actually the reason I even heard about this book in the first place so hopefully I can get to this one and hopefully it's something I like and for the audiobook prompt I have been listening to Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison this is the new one from Rachel Harrison she's the same author as Cackle which is one that I read last year and this one is about this woman who has turned into a werewolf unexpectedly and it's very entertaining. I'm 64% of the way in and so I'm probably just going to be listening to this on audio throughout these next couple of days. And then also, I don't know if I'll have time to get to this one, but I did just check out The Swell from my library and this is a thriller that I've been pretty interested in. I don't know if this would be the perfect fit for this readathon to be honest because, you know, this one kind of feels like it might give summer vibes with like the waves and everything, but also I did get the audiobook checked out from my library so it also might might be the perfect time to read this one. But anyways, it is Thursday afternoon. It's about almost one o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm not gonna lie, my throat has like started hurting yesterday. And I know it's just my GERD acting up because of all the stress happening lately in my life. Because anytime we move or anytime we have some kind of big life event going on, I just get um, ridiculously stressed out for no logical reason. And so then of course my throat starts to act up. So I'm feeling a little bit like meh today because my GERD is giving me some acid reflux issues today. So I thought today would be the perfect day to just kind of lay in bed and get started on one of these books for Monster Mash. So I think I do want to start with one of the horror novellas today, but if you didn't know, one of the prompts for this readathon is to flip a coin and let that coin decide your first read for this readathon. So I thought it would be fun to do that with you on camera because I'm not sure which one of these I want to start today. So you know what? The universe is going to decide for me. So I do have this coin here. It's a nickel and I think I'm going to assign and then I woke up to heads and they were here before us to tails. So let's see what we get. Okay, coin is here. 
Ready? I haven't flipped a coin in like forever. Can I even do this? Oh, okay. Ready? Ready? What is it? What is it gonna be? We got its heads. Do you see that? It's heads. See the head? Great. Cool. We're on the same page. Okay. Awesome. So it looks like, and then I woke up is going to be the first book that I start with, which is actually fantastic because I do think this one is even a little bit longer than this one. So it's good that I'll get a head start on this. <laughs> after three o'clock in the afternoon. I know it's been like a few hours, but I wanted to let you know that I am now 104 pages into And Then I Woke Up. And this book is not really what I was expecting, but in a really cool way. Because you know, as mentioned earlier, I was like, this book I think has something to do with zombies. And it definitely does, but I feel like this is such a unique take on like a zombie apocalypse kind of situation. I'm not gonna lie, you know, the first like 30 to almost like 50 pages were so slow for me, almost to the point where I was like, shit, like, am I gonna DNF this? Like, I'm just, I couldn't get invested. Even though I did think right away the writing was really beautiful. Like, I kind of love how this book opens up when he's like, whenever I tell people what happened, I tell them it was a love story. His friend Macy once told him that when you say you're going to tell people a horror story, they sit up in their chairs defensively waiting to see you fail. But when you tell them it's a love story, they relax and they open themselves wide. Like right away, the writing in this book was really beautiful and it really like gripped me right away. But I feel like uh, the plot in this book, I was just confused on like what the fuck was going on. So I found it really hard to get into because of that, because you know, you're following this protagonist who's staying at this place where like the infected go and they're trying to get cured of this like disease and I was like wait what the fuck is happening and I was so confused and it's not until like 30 to 40 pages in that you start to get flashbacks and see what happened in this world and it's so fascinating like once the scenes with like the actual zombie apocalypse like the outbreak scene started happening oh my god I was invested it was so interesting it was so intense and it was so like graphic I love too because these characters are working in a pizza restaurant when the zombie apocalypse like happens and I just loved the freaking imagery of that because I used to work in a pizza restaurant so like I could only freaking imagine like how wild that would be and like the writing in this book it's like the clatter and conversation of the restaurant lunch rush was immediately replaced with the worst kind of animal noises the smell of baked pizza crust and melted cheese was substituted completely with the unmistakable smell of rotting meat the floor was slick with red smeared across the bright black and white tiles just this once it wasn't pizza sauce like, I just really love how vivid that writing writing is. I feel like it's the kind of writing that like plays on all of your five senses, you know, like you really get the taste, sight, smell. My only gripe with this book so far is that the chapters are very long. Like on chapter three, you're on page 63. Like the chapters are incredibly long. There's only a few chapters in this whole book. And I mean, this book is only like 165 pages long or so, so it's not a long book, but it does have really long chapters that make it feel kind of slow moving. I feel like I had no idea what the fuck was even happening in this book until around chapter three. And and then I was like, oh my God, like things really clicked into place. And then I was like, okay, this is fascinating. Like, I don't think I've ever seen this done before in a zombie apocalypse type of story. And I think it is really interesting. Like on the uh, blurb right here from Stephen Graham Jones, he said, this is a scathing portrait of the world we live in and a running commentary on what's story, what's truth and what's not. And I feel like I agree so much with that. And I feel like there's so much commentary happening in this book. And I feel like a lot of it, to be honest, might be going over my head. So that's why I'm taking a lot of notes. And so I'm in enjoying it like a lot more than I thought I was going to like I don't know I was thinking this was going to be more of like a straightforward kind of like zombie apocalypse story but it's really not that at all it's actually more thought-provoking and interesting but again it is kind of slower at times and like the beginning was so hard for me to get into for some reason but it's definitely picking up in story and I'm really curious to see where this is going to end up going but yeah I think right now I'm going to take a quick shower figure out what we're doing for dinner and then me and my sister have been kind of hooked on love is blind season three so we're probably Probably gonna end up watching a few more episodes of that tonight and then also my boy Jin from BTS is dropping a new single tonight called The Astronaut and apparently it's written by Coldplay or like Coldplay co-wrote it I don't even know so I think Coldplay is involved somehow so it makes me even more excited because what the fuck 
as Jen. Oh my god, his voice. Okay, hi, it's a little bit after 9.30 at night and like um, Jin just dropped his music video for The Astronaut, which is his new song that was co-written by Coldplay and also Chris Martin definitely had some vocals in the background of that track, I noticed. Oh my god, that music video was so cute. It was everything. I love the space vibes. I love the way it sounds like a mix of like Coldplay and Stranger Things and BTS. <laughs> I just love Jin's style. I just really think he has a really great style musically and I just love, you know, the the lyrics of that song like you can tell that that was a song that he wanted to write for the fans you know because he's going to be the one enlisting in the military very soon and I feel like the whole music video was just a huge metaphor for that and like oh my god and that just made me so happy um but anyways I haven't read anything more since I last updated you I have though I've been catching up all night on love is blind um me and Rachel are all caught up on the current episodes right now my god there are so many shitty men this season that's all I will say but anyways I only have about 60 pages left of this so I think I'm just going to finish this tonight and then update you with thoughts in the morning I do have a patreon reading sprint happening tomorrow morning for me at a 11, so I'm really looking forward to those and like gosh I don't know if you can hear the like rain and wind outside but it has been so windy and rainy for the last like 24 hours like last night I could hardly sleep because the wind was so freaking loud I've been waiting for this kind of you know rainy weather for the entirety of October and now just in this like last week of October we're getting hit with some like crazy cold windy rainy October weather and I'm just like living for it but at the same time like god I forget how like hard it is for me to sleep when it's so windy outside because like I just uh, it drives me nuts it makes me so anxious like I don't know why the wind makes me very anxious <laughs> Monster Bash day one. It's officially day one. It's the morning and this morning has been a little chaotic because I'm starting reading sprints in like 10 minutes So I've been hustling this morning because I went to one of my local coffee places and I got a breakfast sandwich and a little You know yogurt parfait and I wanted to let you know that last night I did finish reading and then I woke up and this book was wild like this book was truly something so interesting I feel like I'm personally probably gonna give it like four stars I don't think it was a perfect five-star book for me and I think there was some things at the end of the story like particularly in the last 30 pages that kind of lost me a little bit and I don't know if it's because I was way too tired reading this like late into the night last night or if it's just because the ending was a little bit confusing to be honest like I don't know if I'm smart enough to fully grasp everything that this author was trying to do in this book but I do think this is a really smart and clever horror novel like I really appreciate this book and I feel like you know once again kind of like the blurb that I was reading by Stephen Graham Jones about how this has some good comments on our society right now like and about what truth means and how certain people want to view things as like an absolute truth when it's not and how we're getting brainwashed by like the media like there's just so much great conversation in this book that I really do appreciate and I actually want to come back to this at some point I feel like I need to reread that last little bit just because <laughs> I was very tired last night so but god it was just so good and like some of the stuff that was happening towards the end was so horrifying like because there's a moment where he gets to hear the story of this other woman and she kind of tells her story about what happened to her when the zombie apocalypse kind of like broke out and my god like her shit was absolutely horrifying and just like so disturbing to read and like oh my god I can't even imagine and so yeah I really did enjoy this one I had a really great time reading this I just don't think I'm smart enough to fully grasp everything so it's definitely something I want to come back to at some point to dissect it even more you know but yeah this morning I'm literally starting sprints on patreon in about like seven minutes so I'm gonna start eating my food but I think the first thing I'm gonna try to read on sprints today is they were here before us just because you know this is the Eric LaRocca novella this is one that I'm very curious about and I think this would be a good one to try to get done on sprints today and then who knows I might I might read some manga after that I'm not totally sure yet
just after two o'clock in the afternoon and I have finished They Were Here Before Us and this shit was wild. So something that I didn't expect when I was going into this is that this was kind of going to be like a short story collection. Um, on the front cover here, it just says a novella in pieces. And I was like, I don't really know what that means. And the way that this book is broken up is pretty interesting because at the beginning we get three kind of like really short stories. And then at the end we get two short stories that are just like a little bit longer than those first three. And I really enjoyed this book. I feel like naturally, you know, reading an Eric LaRocca book, I'm very familiar with like his writing style now and his writing style is just so good. It's so dark and disturbing and gruesome. And like the way this book even starts with a word of warning, it literally starts with a warning because of how like graphic and disturbing this shit is. And I just really enjoyed it. I think uh, the first three short stories in the beginning were probably my personal favorites because I had the most like uh, reaction to them which is usually like a good sign for me that I like enjoyed something and the first uh, couple short stories were really interesting because um, they're kind of told from the perspective of like either like a bug or an animal or something that's dealing with a human that's being awful. And so it's kind of like pointing the finger at humanity and being like, humanity is the monster. And I think this is like the perfect thing that I could have read for like Monster Mash Weekend Ween because it does talk about how humanity is the biggest monster. And like, I just think that's so true. And I love that this book kind of like shines a light on that, like how cruel and awful human beings can be. And so I really loved the first couple short stories how to deal with that kind of vibe. And then the last two also kind of had similar themes, but they just felt a little bit different. Something that I also thought was really cool in the last um, short story in this collection, there was kind of like a shout out to you've lost a lot of blood. And I was like, okay, I see you, Eric, I see you. And so yeah, I ended up really enjoying this one. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. Eric LaRocca can do no wrong. Like I will just read every single book that this author writes. And I think now I'm still doing reading sprints on Patreon right now. I'm probably doing my last one right now. I'm probably gonna start on this Junji Ito that I've been very excited to read and hopefully enjoy this one as well. <laughs> o'clock in the afternoon and I just wrapped up my Patreon reading sprints but I wanted to update because I just finished reading Gaio by Junji Ito and this book was totally unexpected. You know with Junji Ito I just never really know what I'm getting myself into. I went into this one not even really knowing like what it was going to be about and of course you know with Junji Ito it's very graphic, very disturbing, very disgusting. I was talking about this on my Patreon reading sprints but I feel like whenever I read a Junji Ito book it just unlocks a new fear that I didn't even know that I had. And sometimes they're completely illogical fears. Like, for example, in this book, it's, you know, the idea of sea creatures just kind of growing legs and being able to walk on land and kill you. And so that's kind of essentially what's happening in this book is that there's just something that's going around that's spreading. And I don't know how I feel about this book because I do feel like the first half of it was like five stars for me. So interesting, so unique, so different. I feel like Junji Ito just has a lot of really good ideas and like weird stuff that I've never seen in horror before. And I just really love his mind. I love, you know, the concepts that he comes up with and the horror, like the way it's written and like the illustrations, you know, itself, like they're just so graphic and visual and so disturbing. But then the second half of this book, I feel like if there's one thing that I've noticed about, you know, Junji Ito's writing, it's that he doesn't always know how to end his books, I feel like. And sometimes I felt like this about Uzumaki as well, is that his stories just go on a little bit longer than necessary. You know, it's just like he just keeps building and building and building. And then it gets to the point where it's like, okay, this is just kind of ridiculous. Like this just needs to end, you know? And so I feel like overall, I'm probably gonna give this one a three star. I don't think it's one of my like top favorites from him, but I still think the concepts and like some of the imagery and the illustrations in this are truly terrifying. Just horrifying. Like what the fuck? He also writes where it's like you feel like you can smell it you know, because he writes like with all of the senses, you know, like just imagine the smell of this like rotting fish just like everywhere. 
It's just so gross, you know? Like, uh, I did enjoy my time reading this though, and it was a very quick read. You know, that's what I love about manga. It's fucking quick, you know? I just flew through this whole thing in like an hour, like hour and a half. But yeah, anyways, it's almost four o'clock. I think I'm gonna take a quick break from reading. We're probably gonna get ready for dinner. I'm probably gonna take a quick shower and get ready for the night. And then I think tonight we are gonna be watching Barbarian. We'll see, we'll have maybe many thoughts. I don't know, I've heard such mixed things from my friends about Barbarian, so I thought it would be perfect to watch it during Monster Match Weekend Week, you know what I'm saying? So let's do it. So cute. Is that comfortable? barbarian and like what the fuck i know a lot of people were saying that it's like not what you would expect and you would be correct it's definitely not what i was expecting <laughs> i don't know what i was expecting but i mean i for the most part did really enjoy it i was I very know. highly entertained you know what's so funny is that i went into it knowing that it was insane but you would not expect it I cannot imagine the people that went into it having no idea that it was even insane I know. and just watched it because they thought it was like a cool horror movie about like an airbnb yeah okay hello it's just after 10 30 at night now and like my god barbarian what a movie i feel like this is one of those movies where i can see why people would really not like it but then i can also see why people would really love it and i kind of fall more on the side that i really enjoyed it i don't know like i know it's probably not like the best horror movie ever but i had so much fun watching it and i just think the concept was so original and so unique and it was a fun time i would probably watch it again but anyways um it's late in the night now and i just got the audiobook checked out for ghost 19 by simone st james and if you don't know what this is um it's actually a novella from what i understand it's like a short story that simone st james uh just came out with and the audiobook is only two hours and 50 minutes and usually i listen to my audiobooks on like 2.5 times speed or higher so i feel like i could actually get through this in about like an hour and a half maybe and so i think i'm just going to um use this as my like you know reading in the dark experience tonight i think i'm gonna like shut off all the lights and then listen to this on audio and see how it is i did just look this up on goodreads and apparently the physical copy of the book doesn't come out until next year and as of right now only the audiobook is available which i think is so strange because i think usually it's the opposite right where like the physical book gets published first and then we have to wait forever for the audiobook but in this case the audiobook is the only way to experience this book right now. So I was like, okay, that's interesting. Get back to you with thoughts tomorrow. And then tomorrow morning, I do have the Book Troop live show for Just Like Home at 11 a.m. with my friend Mandy. It should be really fun. <laughs> It's about uh, seven minutes until I start the book troop live show, but I wanted to update you because last night I did read the entirety of Ghost 19. It only took me like an hour and 20 minutes to get through this audiobook at the speed that I was listening to it at. And this story basically follows this woman who leaves New York City. Like she leaves the city to move to this tiny little suburb and it takes place in 1959, which isn't something that I was expecting for some reason, um, but it takes place in 1959. And it's this whole story about how she's like spying on the neighbor and there's lots of like weird things happening throughout this book like she's spying on the neighbors and then she thinks she starts hearing noises that are coming from her basement and then she also has this like creepy thing happening where she thinks that she's seeing this man like right outside the window and that he's like watching her and for most of this book you know you're left wondering if she's dealing with like seeing actual ghosts or if she's just like going insane you know because especially in the 1950s you know when she has like a doctor come over or somebody try to diagnose her with something it's very 
you know, like, oh, well, you're just losing your mind kind of vibes, which is, you know, I mean, it's the 1950s. And to be honest, I thought this book was fine. You know, I did think it had some creepy moments for sure. Like there were some moments, especially like listening to this in the dark, I was like, okay, that's a little creepy. Like the whole man outside the window thing was definitely the creepiest aspect of the book for me. But by the end, I was like, oh, that's fine. Like, I guess it's over now. Like, that's it. Like, I don't know, it just kind of felt like it ended and like that was the end of the story. So I was like, oh, okay. I just don't think it's going to be anything that's like super memorable for me. Like, yeah, it was a little bit creepy to listen to it in the dark, but I think that's also due to the fact that I had just finished watching Barbarian, which by the way, definitely gave me nightmares last night. Like, what the fuck? Barbarian was truly um something else. Like, I feel like that's going to be one of the movies that ends up staying on my conscious a little bit longer than I expected it to because it was just so weird and bizarre and kind of like creepy, you know, like it really was. But now I'm going to be doing the live show for Just Like Home with my friend Mandy, which I'm very excited about. I'm so excited to hear everyone's thoughts on this book because I feel like it's going to be a very divisive one. And then after this live show, I think I'm going to be reading Blood on the Tracks Volume 1. Um, me and my friend Mikay really wanted to buddy read this, so I let him know. I was like, as soon as the book troop live show is over, I'm going to read it. And so we're like, okay, let's go. So hopefully this is something that we both enjoy, but yeah. <laughs> my spooky little ghost. afternoon right now and I have uh, changed because we are getting ready to go to one of my friends Katie um, she is incredibly talented she is a music teacher and she's going to be performing and conducting at this uh, concert that's gonna be happening at the university like how exciting I'm just so happy for her and I think this is gonna be so freaking cool I did just finish reading volume one of blood on the tracks this was a super super quick read like there is lots and lots of photos and very little like dialogue or text i already got so much out of this like this was so fascinating anybody that compared this to bates motel you were absolutely correct like the vibes are on point this is a very um kind of strange like mother and son bond that these two have it's like she's very protective of him almost in a way that feels a little bit like too much i was kind of like wondering i was like okay where is the where does like the thriller or like horror aspect really come into this story because it's mostly just kind of uncomfortable the whole time and then at the end i was like holy shit like that's where it comes in and this had a really solid ending to the point where i'm like i immediately put volume two on hold at my library because i was like bitch what the fuck i need to read the second one immediately so i really enjoyed this i would probably give this like a four stars and yeah i'm just making a quick snack before we head out that involves Nutella and banana because I love, you know, just putting Nutella on like toast and then putting bananas on top. Like it's ugh, so good. Oh uh, yes, that's how it's done. Just toast, Nutella, bananas. Yes, I did put on a paper towel because I didn't want to dirty a plate, you know? Oh, so much love. So much love. 
hello oh my gosh what a crazy <laughs> and chaotic busy day so it's about 11 o'clock at night right now if you couldn't tell it's very late so much went on this afternoon you know we went to my friend katie she had this amazing concert at the university and she not only played in the band but then she also conducted a whole song for the first time and it was really cool to be able to see that my friend katie she's such a bad bitch like i just love like it was so cool to see that happen for her not only that but like seeing a band in concert like that like it's been so long since i've seen a band perform live in that way like a jazz band you know and it just sent me back because if you didn't know i actually played saxophone in middle school i played for about like four years and and so it just really like sent me back to that time in my life where I was playing the saxophone. And it was also, you know, the concert was on the university where I used to go. You know, I only went to that university for one quarter. So I was only there for a very short amount of time, like two or three months. But it just like really sent me back and it reminded me like how much I miss being you know, in school and like on a college campus and like, you know, the vibes of a college campus are just not like anything else in the world. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It just makes me feel so inspired and like so motivated and it makes me want to learn and I just miss learning and I miss being in college. But it was a really, really great afternoon. Um, right after the concert, we went and picked up my parents from the airport because they got back home today from a week long trip. They've been gone for a week. And so it was really nice to have them back home. And so that's kind of why I didn't end up vlogging as much this afternoon because you know it was a lot of just catching up with my parents seeing how the trip was and then also you know my mom wanted to watch all of the new bts videos that she missed while she was gone so we spent some time tonight just like catching up on the bts videos you know how it is but yeah um it was a really really great day and i'm apologize that i didn't vlog more throughout the day but i don't think it's too much of an issue because this vlog is already pretty long and so this is where um this vlog is coming to an end i know that i only read you know the blood on the tracks manga earlier today like that was the only thing i read today but i feel like i've already blasted through a lot of my tbr <laughs> that i've had for this readathon I know for sure tomorrow I want to read The Nice House on the Lake. I think I'm gonna be reading this tomorrow. Also tomorrow on Sunday, me and Olivia are gonna be doing our, you know, spooky movie night, which I'm so nervous for because I'm so scared of this movie. Like, I'm <laughs> I'm terrified that I'm just gonna think it's so scary. And then also, um, I just got the audiobook checked out for that book, Suburban Hell, which, you know, this is one that I've been wanting to read for quite some time. And so I got the audiobook. The audiobook's only eight hours long, actually. So I think I might um, start listening to this one later tonight, or I might just try to finish um, Such Sharp Teeth because this is another one that I'm currently listening to and I'm about 64% of the way through. So I still have a few more hours. So maybe I'll try to finish such sharp teeth first and then maybe I'll try to read Suburban Hell because that's another book that's been on my October TBR and it's just perfectly timed that I was able to get this audiobook now. But anyways that's gonna be all for me for day two. It's been a really great readathon so far and I hope you stick around for part two of these reading vlogs which should be coming out in a couple days hopefully on November 1st. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in just a little bit. Bye!